You're listening to Mile High Insiders with Nick Kendall and Luke Patterson. Head on over to milehighhuddle.com for all things Broncos. Now, it's time to find out what's going on behind the walls of UC Health Training Center. Who was that? Lean with it, rock with it, lean with it, rock with it. I don't remember who that was. I just lean back. That was that. Just lean back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do the rock the thumbs away. Up. Yeah. That was a different one. That was Fat Joe. All right, well, we're running now. We'll kick it off to you, <laughs> rocking our flat bills like we're back in the mid-2000s. And Luke, take it yeah. away from here. And welcome to everyone yeah. Saturday night. Heck yeah, man. What's up, Broncos country? It's Saturday night, which means it's time for the Mile High Insiders. I'm Luke Patterson. He's Nick Kendall. And uh, we've got a huge show planned for you guys, man. This mm-hmm. is the time. We, this is the time. We talked a little bit draft yesterday. We're going to talk a little bit draft today. And we've got some news that we've got to share with you. Some news that's just come to light regarding the quarterback position in the NFL and the Broncos. Well, they're being linked to this one quarterback Nick, we got to get to that. But first, man, Saturday night, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. I went on a hike this morning with the wife, a sunrise hike, so I'm pretty tired. I think you're going to be up early about the time that I was up today, tonight, or I guess tomorrow morning, but uh, doing yeah. well. Also, then took a dog for a walk, and it was sunny today. And in Seattle, a sunny day in January, feeling blessed. It's going to snow, it looks like, next week. But, you know, it's it, it's great. I'm also still riding the high from last night. Also, we had that great show last night. Everyone go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. It was a lot of fun. Obviously, yeah. differing opinions, but, I mean, that's the same in every draft room across the country. You know, you're it's down here yeah. for the huddle up people to teams across the country. You're going to have differing opinions on these guys, and that's what makes the draft process so fun. And also, I made an sh- uh, appearance on Broncos Country Tonight last night as well. Uh, so, a lot of football the last 24 hours. I'm excited to keep it up. I'm going to see those guys. I'm going to see Benjamin Albright. I'm going to see Ryan Edwards. I'm going to see my buddy Cecil from the fan. I'm going to see all the cats in Denver down there, hoping to see George Payton and his crew because George Payton, Nick, he's a scout at heart, right? It's how he came up. You know the story. Everyone knows the story. Uh, You know, not a bad word is being said about George Payton, unless you're Joel Klatt and just going off on the guy right now. But uh, that's neither here nor there. I want to say what's up to some folks before we get into our matters of business, because we've got a good crowd going tonight. Richie Rich, I see you in here, buddy. We've got Darab in the house. Corey Johnson, appreciate you. Gary Smith, our boy, Muhammad Badri, I see you, buddy. Thank you so much for, for joining. Yeah, we got Liam J in the house and my boy JT. He's been asking me a few questions. I'll get to you, JT. I'm not. uh, Everyone loves a good tease. So I gave I gave JT a good tease tease on Twitter. So I promised I'd get to him today. Uh, We got Muhammad coming in, man. He's always showing us love. Jay Velasco. How's it going, man? Thank you so much for joining the show. All right. Before we get to it, Nick, and I want you to break this news for MHH. Just like Chad did on milehighhuddle.com, Chad Jensen wrote a piece about something we're going to talk about here in just a second. But before we do, guys, we've got a ton that we're going to get to. Stuff you're going to love. I can't wait to talk to you about. I'm just, I'm so excited. But we have got to start off with our presenting sponsor of today's show, Manscaped. Listen up, fellas. 2020, man, 2020 was rough. But guess what? It's 2021. So now that means it's time to embrace this new year, new me mindset. And the best way to start cultivating that is with Manscaped. Manscaped is the best in men's below the waist grooming, offering precision engineered tools for your family jewels and helping 2 million men around the world, keeping their male grooming on point. So if you let yourself go in 2020, which is easy to do, right? And your hair growing out, beard going out, looking like a caveman, you know? Uh, if you let yourself go in 2020, in this tough quarantine, Manscaped's here. They have got your back so you can reboot, stay clean, and stay shaved, Nick. I know I just gave myself a little bit of a trim. I'm trying to look as pretty as I can. Face for radio, I know. But Manscaped, man, they're they're hooking it up. Yeah, man. I, like I said earlier, I went on a hike with the wife this morning, and if anybody, you know, my friends would tell you, I am a sweaty son of a gun. And that does not just happen above the waist. That happens below the, or below the belt as well. And thank God for Manscaped's crop mops, the uh, cojone wipes, as we'll call them. And let me tell you, a godsend uh, travel size, too. So I'm, I'm excited to take those backpacking because, again, I'm a sweaty boy. It's going to happen. So that's really great. Also, they have sent me this. Uh, I got this fantastic uh, cologne, the refined cologne. Mm. And 
it smells really good. Like, you know, sometimes nice. you know, hit or miss. I'm very particular with my cologne. I've been sticking with a few, uh, two, two brands for probably the last five, six years. Cause they're trusted. This one's going to make the rotation. It smells awesome. So, uh, obviously they have a lot of great other products, but you know, manscaped there, <laughs> they talk about, uh, draft boards and whatnot. Top of the big board manscapes up there. Yeah, man, absolutely. And and you're talking about just all the benefits that Manscaped gives you. I'm telling you guys, I've just I'm sure you're sick of hearing about it. I'm hitting the road tomorrow morning, 4 30. I'm gonna get out there to Mobile Senior Bowl, our boots on the ground. And Nick, I was able to get the Manscaped shed travel bag. It got kept all my goodies stored very comfortably mm-hmm. and uh just as as convenient as it can get, man. I've got the man wipes, they smell great, they're pH balanced. Be sure to get at Manscaped where you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code HUDDLE at manscaped.com. Again, go to manscaped.com, enter the promo code HUDDLE in all caps, and get your 20% off with free shipping. Yeah, also, guys, make sure you're following us on Facebook. You can find, or on Twitter, you can find Luke at Luke Patterson LP should be seen there on the screen and myself at Nick Kendall MHH. Also, if you're joining us today via YouTube, the biggest thing you can do for us, a huge favor would be to like subscribe and share our show wherever you're watching uh, doing. So helps not only this show, but every single one of the other of the mile high huddle podcast, huddle up Dove Valley deep divers uh, building the Broncos. That's a big help. Also guys, Facebook people. I see you out there. I see your eyeballs in the corner. I yeah. see not very many thumbs up or hearts. What are we doing? Click of click the thumbs up, click the heart. That can do us a lot of help as well. We'd really appreciate it. Go to iTunes, leave us a five star rating and review. All of that helps us continue to bring these nut shows every single night of the week. I don't think there's another Bronco show out there that is seven nights a week. Now we do spread the love with all these different shows and different strokes for different folks. Uh, no matter what though, different strokes, different folks, manscapes here for you, but still no, yeah, it's, uh, all these shows seven days a week. You can help us all by just liking the show or liking any of them. Also, guys, don't miss our great off-season content now for the Broncos at milehighhuddle.com, an affiliate of Sports Illustrated and part of Fan Nation, also brought to you by Overtime Media. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. So, Luke, on to you now. The big thing, the, tonight's show, we were going to talk about the free agency, the draft in general, and then an hour before kickoff here for our own show, it was announced the, the speculation can be over. Matt Stafford is hitting the market. Uh, former first overall pick from the University of Georgia, uh, spent his career in the, I mean, it's kind of a low sh- low shot considering the Broncos' struggles the last few years, but we can just call Detroit a trash heap. I mean, they're just probably one of the worst football organizations out there, and uh, Stafford's been confined to that situation, unfortunately, and now he's going to be out, and there's a market for him. And a lot of Broncos country probably maybe a little bit overrating their own picks or undervaluing what Stafford would cost, but the Broncos are continually listed as a team that makes sense for Stafford. And there probably will be some interest, but I'm curious about your interest, Luke. Matt, Matt Stafford, 32 years old, on the market, potentially a fit for the Denver Broncos. Man, this was uh, this was something we've all been talking about, but now it's starting to feel real, uh, right? When Adam Schefter and Ed Werder, and I think it was Tom Palacero, I think you sent me a tweet, the, yeah. these guys are so plugged in, man. I mean, talk about verified sources. It doesn't get more verified than that. Um, they're trying to flip over a new leaf over there in Detroit. Chad Brown, actually, this is something he had talked about weeks ago, just with some whispers he was hearing, and none of us were surprised. We're all hearing the same thing. So, man, it, trying to shift from the Deshaun Watson fantasy and over to the Matt Stafford, is it realistic? Yeah, it's realistic. Absolutely. The Broncos were listed as a suitor. I think just like the the Colts, I think I saw the 49ers on there, the Broncos, uh, a couple other teams. But, man, it, this is tough for me. It really is because I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. And I've got some complex feelings about it. I don't want Andy Dalton here. I just assume ride with Drew Locke. But – my guy JT was asking me right away, hey, man, Matt Stafford, what, what do you think? Does he make the Denver Broncos a playoff contender? Um, he makes them competitive. I'll say that. He makes them competitive. But I do not think Matthew Stafford alone makes the Denver Broncos a playoff contender. The reason why, there, there's just too many inconsistencies. It, is Matt Stafford in charge of all the timeouts? Is he going to 
pick up the slack that Vic Fangio is is giving as head coach? Is he going to, you know, pick up the secondary woes? I mean, there's just so much that this team needs. I'm not saying I'd hate it if he was here. I think Broncos country would actually feel very excited because he's competent. He's been doing it a long time. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, man, this guy has some freaky throws. Well, Aaron Rodgers has been on record saying, dude, my boy Matt Stafford's been doing that long before Patrick Mahomes was even in the league. I get he's expensive, but I it's exciting to me, man, because the Broncos need a new quarterback. That's for sure, Nick. Uh, yeah, I mean, Stafford – when you look at it, he feels like he's been in the league forever, but then you dig into the statistics and where he ranks amongst his peers. And again, a really bad situation in Detroit. I mean, you see the Bears every few years, they kind of get a defense and make com- uh, make it competitive. You see the Vikings, again, with Peyton over there, challenging the Packers, which when you have a Hall of Fame quarterback, it's the situation the Broncos find themselves in now, unfortunately, with Mahomes. It's probably a little early to say Hall of Fame, but he's definitely on the trajectory. He's on the trajectory to be top five all time, unfortunately. That's just the reality. And right. If you don't want to live in that reality, then, you know, I'm sorry. Here we are. Uh, but no, Matt Stafford. I mean, he's really talented. He's really intriguing. He's going to be 33 years old in November, I believe, yep. this upcoming year. So you're still talking about three to five good years of quarterback play, especially with how long guys are playing today. I mean, last year when he was playing, he's been really good. He's only missed, I believe, eight games in his entire career. So a lot of people, oh, he's injury. He did have that one year of injury, but you know, I, I, people were saying the same thing about, Hey, let's keep Tim Tebow. Why would you want Peyton Manning? He's injured. He's washed up, you know? So obviously Stafford isn't Peyton Manning, but you don't want to just completely dismiss it for that reason. So uh, he's a top 10 talented quarterback in the NFL, in my book, definitely top 12. And he gives you a chance. I think it's obviously a different conversation than Watson, who I believe is top five and only 25 years old, but the compensation is different. The contract is much easier to swallow. So uh, here we got DNV three coming in top 12 quarterback for the next three to five years. I mean, I, I agree uh, still that makes you, what is that? Where does that rank in the AFC West from quarterbacks, anywhere from the second best quarterback to the worst quarterback, depending on how good Derek Carr is that season, but you give yourself a chance. And I think Vic Fangio right now, you know, people are like, Oh, you can't give up all these picks. You need to really fortify the defense. If there's somebody in Denver right now that is saying, Hey, go get that quarterback. I think it's gotta be Vic Fangio because the floor it's a known commodity. You're getting a guy in there right now. I mean, we talked last night, fairly certain is Parsons, all these guys, huge bust potential because of the unknowns surrounding all of them. You get Stafford in here, floors raised. And I think a massive job security raised as well for a guy like Fangio. Well, talking about job security and that certainly gives people excitement like George Payton with that six year contract. I think the numbers I have yet to see a report about the numbers. I think Shefty said he somewhere around five million a year is what he would have guessed George Payton was getting. So obviously something to get excited about. But speaking of getting excited, we got our boy Mundungus Creevy coming in with a four ninety nine super chat saying go get Stafford now. Guys, McDungus is a huge, huge supporter of the show. Absolutely Im- implore you to go chat football with him for a minute, man. He's a good cat, good dude. Check out MHRT. Uh, go get Stafford. Man, how do you feel about that? What it, It's got to come down to cost, right? And I would, I would just yeah. implore everybody to go to milehighhuddle.com and check out an article that Chad Jensen just wrote right before we came on air, man. He broke it. Report. Broncos should be in play. For Lions quarterback, Matthew Stafford. And that's, of course, coming from Adam Schefter, stating it's coming from Detroit. Breaking news. In an arrangement, the two sides have discussed and mutually agreed upon the Lions and quarterback, Matthew Stafford, expecting to part ways this offseason. With Detroit listening to trade offers for its former number one overall pick starting this week. League sources are telling ESPN this. Ed Werder is talking about the Colts, the Broncos, the Patriots, and the Niners all to Mm. be in play. Um, Man, we talked a little bit about the injury. I'm not so worried about the injury history. You know what I'm worried about? I'm worried about that two-year $47 million left on the contract. A whole lot of money, Nick. A whole lot of money. That's a bargain. That is a bargain for what he brings, though. I mean, you're talking about guys like Matt Ryan and Kirk Cousins who are getting paid way more than that. For next year's contract, and I know with how a lot of teams' cap situation is as bad, but I have, we have Field Yates, or, yeah, Field Yates here saying that the cap hits for 2021, just $20 million, which, again, for a quarterback is chump change. You're not paying any of that signing bonus. And then $23 million in 2022. That's, 
I mean, when you're talking quarterbacks, and especially ones not on their rookie contract, that's a bargain, especially when we're talking in quarterbacks now getting $40 million a year, $35 million a year. So 20, you're right. I, I'll push back a little bit just because it's in comparison to these other contracts that are being signed right now. Well, listen, Nick, maybe I'm conditioned. Okay. Maybe I'm conditioned to John Elway, never paying anybody. Um, you know, I guess he only pays the people that are from outside of the organization. So, you know, I'm just, I, I'm just, he doesn't even pay his own guys. I'm sitting here wandering around on Justin Simmons, just like everybody else. I'm no, I'm not hearing anything. Uh, it's just, man, to me, that feels like a whole lot of money. Juwan James, a whole lot of money. Um, you're going to have to start paying guys down the road, just like we alluded to with the draft talk last night. Go check that out on Spotify or wherever you guys get your podcast. It was a lot of fun, man, a lot of fun. And we didn't talk over each other too much. I think Chad was really proud of us. I know I was proud of us yeah. as well. Um, but no, Buana, if we could throw up that uh, that last super from Willie G coming in. Willie, appreciate you so much. Go Broncos. Listen, guys, I'd rather try for Jameis Winston than Stafford, though. Nick, okay, Broncos country, and I heard you sigh. Calm down, Nick. I'm going to talk you off the ledge. I'm thinking about it. I'm I'm thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to talk you off the ledge for just a second because here's the thing, man. I'm not not a Jameis Winston fan, but is he in the running for a veteran quarterback to come in here? Sure. Why not? Yeah. You you have to expect his name to be on the list. Is he comparable to Matthew Stafford? No, absolutely not. Matthew Stafford, 10 out of 10 times I would go Matthew Stafford over Jameis Winston, and I'm not trying to, you know, dump garbage all over Jameis Winston because I actually think he'll have a chance as a, uh, a like a revital period of his career now that yeah. Drew Brees is maybe leaving. But what do you think about that, Nick? Jameis Winston – Versus Matthew Stafford, Jameis Winston will be cheaper, right? He's a little bit younger. Uh, what do you think, man? It's a different plan. It's a different direction. If you go get Stafford, you're trading nine overall as the starting point. I'm sorry, folks. I see a lot of people like, oh, I'd trade for Stafford if I could give up the third round pick in Von Miller. That's not happening. That's what about just... the second? What about the second round? Because I got a problem with the first. I do. It's going to be the first. If you if you're mm. if you're going to play ball, it's going to be the first. It just no. is. He's only 32 years old. It's it's going to mimic the Carson Palmer trade, which was a one and a two. And Carson Palmer demanded out. So I even think it might cost a little bit more. I'm thinking you're talking one or nine overall this year, 40 this year as well, the second, and a player like Tim Patrick. And then you get five years of top 12 quarterback play. I mean, you have to be able to swallow that cost if you're going to be in the market because there's going to be demand, especially with teams like the 49ers and the Colts, who their window is now. I so know. If you, I yeah, know. If you, so if you want to play ball, that's the cost. And if you say that's too much for you, then that's your own individual decision. I'm not ready to say yes or no either way, uh, because again, it's a it's a relatively cost controlled quarterback. Uh, Luke, where do you think next year, twenty million? Where does that rank as far as starting quarterbacks against the cap next year? Oh man, it's so tough to project it with the cap next year, right? But twenty million. Oh, no, just already guys paid. Already guys paid. Where would twenty million rank? Not too bad. I don't. I, I don't think that that would be. I don't think it would be an awful decision by any means. It's the seventeenth highest paid quarterback. Seventeenth. Right. So, That's how so, high guys are getting paid now, and you're you're getting return, so better middle, invest, better return. Then. So middle of the road, middle of the pack, comparable. Yeah. yeah, not bad. I mean, when Ben Roethlisberger is getting forty million cap number, and Matt Ryan's forty million, and Drew Brees next year he's going to retire, but thirty six. I mean, Jared Goff thirty four, Carson Wentz thirty four. I mean, it's that's twenty million is not a. Uh, a killer. So, and the Broncos are one of the few teams that actually has the financial flexibility to do this. Now this does mean moving on from Bob Miller. This does mean questions mm-hmm. about uh, Justin Simmons. And it probably means saying goodbye to Shelby Harris. But again, we've said it here a hundred times. At least I have, you're not going anywhere unless you have a quarterback and drew Locke's been a bottom five quarterback in the NFL. The last, this last season, obviously there's a lot of reasons why that happened. And if the Broncos want to roll the dice with him again this season to see if those tools click and everything comes together, fine. I get it. But still, uh, that's it's a conversation you have to have. And I'm intrigued. I guess I would say I'm intrigued because the offense is ready to go now. And also, a point I want to make as well is this is such a young offense, and the weapons are young, young, kind of learning it along. I'm not sure if Drew Ock is the guy to really help cultivate those guys to become what we want them to be. I mean, we kind of saw it. Obviously, it's not Tim Tebow to Peyton Manning, but – we had Demarius Thomas, we had Eric Decker, we had Julius Thomas, and those guys, he saw flashes, but they were never really getting it all together. And then they had that veteran come in, the guy who actually told them, this is what you do. This is what's expected to you, and I'm going to hit you when you do your job. And all of a sudden, those guys look like all pros. 
And I think that's very, very much could be the case with this Broncos young core right now. Is Drew Locke the guy to really develop those guys around them? I mean, you're, you're rolling the dice there. Yeah, and Drew Locke is going to be on this team. Something before we hopped on the show that I was just thinking about, you know, okay, let's say Matt Stafford gets here. Whatever the cost is, whatever the cost is, Matt Stafford's their guy. Matthew Stafford is their guy. Let's assume that. They love him enough. They get him. He's here. Um, what does that mean for Drew Locke? It's not the end of the world, folks. Uh, yeah. Nick and I have both said Drew is salvageable. So maybe you see what happens with the season for Matthew Stafford. If he gets hurt, like everybody, I see everybody saying, you know, he's going to get hurt. He's going to fall apart. Well, if that's the case, then guess what? Drew Locke is still here. Okay. They're going to have money problems or whatever. Uh, but I don't think it's the worst case scenario for Drew Locke. I just, it could be a good thing for a young quarterback. So this guy who's, you know, 24 years old, everybody's calling him a kid. He's a grown man. All right. Can we stop calling him a kid? He's a grown man, but he has the potential to do these things. I don't want to quit on lock, but I'm over it in terms of just anointing him the starting quarterback. So absolutely. I'm intrigued about Matthew Stafford. And for anyone that's lukewarm on Matthew Stafford, that argument can certainly be made. Yeah, I know. It's and again, I see a lot of backlash in the comment section about nine overall, but that's the cost of business. That's what it's going to cost. And if that's too much for you, then so be it. And we'll just see if the Broncos are going to be willing to bet on him. But speaking on betting on folks, guys, tonight's live stream podcast is brought to you by sportsbetting.com. If you're looking to make watching your favorite sports a little bit more interesting with a little bit more action on it, sportsbetting.com is your one-stop shop. They have sharp odds and low juice. They have in-house bookmakers. They're not a third provider or they're not a third party provider of odds. They also have reduced juice and the best prices. They have hassle free bonuses with a one time rollover, which means the money is yours after you bet it just one time. They also have 24 seven live customer support. So always a real person will answer you in the United States. And here's the kicker right now. After you make your first deposit, sportsbetting.com will double your deposit up to $300. That's $300 in free bet credits. So guys, head on over to www.sportsbetting.com forward slash mile high huddle. Again, that's www.sportsbetting.com forward slash mile high huddle and capitalize on up to $300 in free bet credits and start 2021 off on the right foot. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. And uh, man, we got some fun games tomorrow. Maybe at some point uh, we will uh, look at, talk about the games tomorrow as well, because they're intriguing. I mean, a lot of great games coming up, but yeah. we'll be, uh, you know, it'll be fun. And man, talk about Again, I just can't I can't get out of this cycle where it's like if you don't have a quarterback it doesn't even matter. You're not you need to walk such a small fine line. I mean, you got Josh Allen who's a top 5 quarterback this year, Patrick Mahomes, top 5 quarterback this year, Tom Brady, top 5 quarterback this year, and uh Aaron Rodgers, MVP this year in my opinion. So like if you don't have the guy, you're sunk. Like it just unless you have an all-time defense, which it's probably easier to get a Hall of Fame Hall of Fame quarterback than to have an all-time defense. Honestly, that's just that's just statistics. So, uh, anyways, we got Jamie coming in here. The uh, the Rangers, I think that is a a Scottish uh, soccer team. Maybe it's rugby, but either way, I might, one of my college roommates had a, a flag of theirs. He thought it was a cool logo, and it kind of reminds me of my favorite soccer team, uh, Chelsea Football Club. So, shout out oh. to Jamie Renton coming in here. Uh, bringing in Stafford means not being able to fix the holes on defense. He isn't good enough to cover for those holes. Um, You know what? That's probably something where you're going to have to live with it. I will say that the Broncos this year, you're not expecting to have the same rash of injuries that you had this season. And the Broncos defense also played the third hardest schedule in the entire NFL and still finished middle of the pack. According to football outsiders, DVOA, the offense or the defense played the third hardest schedule. So it's going to regress a little bit back to the mean next year. It's not going to be as hard of a schedule. And also it's going to be another year in the system. And I'm not expecting to, to rely on, especially at the end of the season an undrafted free agent at cornerback one and a third round cornerback at the other side. So, you know, will it kill the defense? It definitely hurts the defense's ability to stack and there will be holes, but look at the chiefs right now. Look at the bills. Look at the Packers. Look at the secondary of the bucks. Those teams have holes all over the place. If you have a great quarterback, you have a chance to cover those holes. If not, you have to have a perfect roster. So, you know, it's, you're going to have to be in that conversation. 
Uh, yeah, Jamie, that's a that's a great super. I really appreciate it. Thank you for joining MHI on your Saturday night. Um, here's the thing. No, I completely disagree with you, man. I completely <laughs> disagree fine. with you. You are crazy. Everybody in the comment section just getting after Nick saying, this guy is crazy. No, Nick, you, I love you, man. But, dude, yeah. We went through a whole draft last night, and you and I were agreeing on corners, linebackers, D-line. Gosh dang it. I feel like <laughs> Philip River. Dag nabbit. We got to get some more defenders in here, man. I, my Agreed. boy, Parnell Motley, I was I got to chat with him at the Shrine game last year. I was saying, I want this kid here. He's not the answer. He's not a starting corner. Michael Ushimudia needs some work. Uh, man, this is the place to get a premier corner in the first round. I hear you. Quarterback is the most important position. But if we're giving away first rounders like it's nothing, then I'm going to give away first rounders for the house and go after Deshaun Watson. What do you want I mean, from Deshaun? And he's yours because Matthew Stafford, while this – don't get me wrong, Broncos country. I'm not trying to pump you up here. Matthew Stafford is way more realistic of landing in Denver. I mean, you're not right? competing with the second and third overall pick. Also, there's a rule where you can only trade picks up to three years in the future. And that means teams like the Jets and the uh, Texans or not the Texans, the Jets and the Dolphins have a much bigger leg up because they can offer more first round picks. So the Broncos simply can't offer. It's just it's not legal. So uh, it's just it's hard to do, especially competing. I mean, you're talking about like to, for the Broncos to move up from nine to two or three, you're giving up a first round pick already. So there's a huge difference there. So, right. Yeah, it's it's tough. And Greg, I see you, and I'll get to you in just a second, but I want to ask you guys, Broncos country and Nick and, and, and MHH community, maybe you guys can help me with this tampering, Nick, the, that the GMs can't contact Deshaun, teams can't start saying, hey, man, would you want to come here and maybe we'll start trying to broker a deal? Rules are bent all the time in the NFL. Um, that's just the way it is. It's it's crazy. If you're uh, not cheating, you're not trying, right? And we say that last week, too. Yes. But – how does this work, man, with the timing of it? I mean, is this something where the Texans are trying to field offers and then go to Deshaun and say, do you like these teams? Or is it Deshaun breaking his silence saying, look, guys, here are the teams that I like. Start calling. I mean, how? what's the order of events there? Because we know one thing. Deshaun Watson hates the owner of the Houston Texans. They've got a chaplain, and I'm not trying to dump on that profession, that religion, or anything like that. But the fact of the matter is you have a chaplain who's running the team now because it's the good old yeah. boy business in the Houston Texans where it's just, hey, let's just bring on our best friends, and it's just a mess. So we know Deshaun Watson wants out, but how does that order of events, how would you think that would work? Well, I think a lot of times you can have contact via a mutual party. And most of the time that is brokered via a shared agent. So if you have somebody who is working with Deshaun, his agent, and you have a player that has the same agent, there can be some, you know, Hey, go to your guy and say, blah, blah, blah. Also sure. there are a lot of times teams can grant permission for guys to talk. Like let's say Deshaun Watson is going to wants to come to Denver is interested in Denver. The Texans then can allow that player or whoever to, to negotiate some contract before the deal is agreed upon. But I mean, I hate using this word so much, and it's probably been the word of the year over the last calendar year, but unprecedented. I mean, Deshaun Watson, right. 25 years old, top five quarterback. We've never seen this before. I probably will never see it again because nobody's going to be as stupid as the Texans have been with this kind of player. But, you know, <laughs> here we are. Uh, there's, it, the Patriots it's way, cool. baby. Incompetence. Incompetence. It's a Patriots way without locking into a six round quarterback that becomes the GOAT and the best coach of all time. So, uh, those are pretty important factors. So we got Steven Baumgartner coming in here uh, with the super still, still rocking the Drew Lock one. So we got some Drew Lock, and I'm not out on Drew Lock either. I'm just saying, no. with Stafford, you, you have to, I'm at the point where I'm evaluating all options, just like George sure. Payton has to be right now. Everything yeah. is on the table. And if it's not, you're limiting yourself. And that's the viewpoint I think we all need to have. Just outright dismissing anything at this point. Foolish. Don't do that. Uh, so Steven Baumgartner, though. Hey, guys, Steven. Hey to you. Thank you so much What's for joining up, Steve us on fine Saturday evening. Yeah, speaking of goats, you, Steve-O's one of our goats, man. He's always there for us, dude. Appreciate you so much. He's a Nebraska much. fan, so, you know, like a hit or miss. But when it's college, outside of college football season, Steven's the guy. But when <laughs> I'm I'm a Hawkeye, you know, I, I, I have to get in a dig in Nebraska at least I once know. a week. I'm Otherwise, corn won't grow. 
I'm going to see some of your Hawkeyes in a couple of days, man. I'll, I'm going to send you pictures. I'm going to ask you everything about them so I'm not drooling all over myself when I get there. But uh, Madonka hey, Wachter Wachter is fell in love with uh, Ojemudia because of the senior bowl. I he know it, man. one of the better cornerbacks there, and he stood out, and here well, we are. That's the thing, dude. You know it. I mean, there's no combine. We're going to do some pro days this year, but this is a very yeah. meaningful event, so I can't yes. wait to get out there. But uh, This is the Overtime Podcast Network. Speaking of always being optimistic, Mundungus is always keeping us on our toes. Creevy coming in with the 499 Super. Who has more cap space or more potential cap space to be able to offer Stafford what he wants? So, Mundungus is asking, all right, when it relates to Matt Stafford's contract, when it relates when it relates to cap space, who are we really talking about as uh, potential suitors and a possible team that Matt Stafford wants to go to? Certainly, he doesn't want to just go to a trash pile of a team. Um, yeah. You would think he would want to go to a team that has talent. Yeah, I think the Broncos right now. That if you if I was doing Vegas odds, I would have the Broncos third, uh, just because. The need there, I think Vic Fangio would be interested. The Broncos offense is set up to have a good quarterback come in. But right now, I think it's pretty obvious. Number one, 1A one and 1B would be the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, they're a team. They have an offense that is built to win right now. They have a great offensive line. They could use some weapons, but I mean, we saw Phillip Rivers there at the end last year. It was kind of just starting to get sad. I'm glad he hung it up when he did. But you put in Stafford in there, top 10, 12 quarterback. Colts have a chance in the AFC, especially with that good offensive line. They'd kind of be up there, very similar build to the uh, Cleveland Browns. You know, they're, they're essentially the Cleveland Browns with the offensive line and a solid quarterback there. Uh, and then you'd have the San Francisco 49ers would be the other team. Uh, obviously, they've been investing in the offense for a few years, and that's a team that desperately needs a quarterback. And that means I'm disparaging my boy C.J. Beathard. Again, go Hawks. Uh, but Jimmy Garoppolo, not it. C.J. Beathard, not it. Nick Mullins, not it. Uh, the 49ers, I think they were interested in trading up for a quarterback, but that looks exceedingly less likely. Uh, so 49ers and the Colts. I see it here. Gary Smith coming in, Indy, and then CC right after it, 49ers. I think those are the two most likely teams. Yeah, I think that's a safe bet, man. Man, Kyle Shanahan, I'd wonder what that guy's thinking. I wonder, Deshaun Watson has got to be his prime candidate. I mean, gosh, that'd be scary, right? Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson in the same division. Sign me up for Kyler that, Murray. man. That Kyler sounds – Yeah, Kyler Murray, dude, exactly. That's exciting stuff. But speaking of exciting stuff, Muhammad, man, coming in here, always exciting me and you with his enthusiasm, his positivity, and his great Broncos loyalty. I mean, this guy represents Broncos country through and through. I love you guys. Well, Muhammad, I speak for Nick, MHH. We love you too, man. And look at him dripping out in swag. Guys, get on over to the huddleuppodstore.com and get your swag on. Grab yourself an MHI hat. Nick's got a building the Broncos hat. Uh, Carl and Nick, obviously, on Tuesday nights. I'll be joining them next Tuesday. Stay tuned for that. And then Huddle Up Pod. Get yourself some stuff there. The Dove Valley Deep Divers. Do not forget them as well and get that swag on. And Willie G coming in here again. And Willie G, man, Willie G's got something with Jameis Winston, and I like it because he's looking yeah. at all possibilities just like you, Nick. You said yeah. it last night. We all said it. You can't say never, right, especially nope. right now. Crazier things have happened. And Willie yeah. G coming in with Jameis Winston is already a back is already a backup quarterback. Uh, definite competition competition so yeah. yeah man i mean it's he's, a different direction sure it's a different direction and Jameis winston a possible candidate willie g i like where your head is at thank you so much for your support Jameis winston that's a name to watch out for broncos country you never know i mean what if uh Jameis winston comes in here for a workout something like that yeah. right they, they can completely show interest and um it not go anywhere maybe it does go somewhere maybe he becomes a camp arm eventually guys go down guys get that funny little bug that carl's daughter likes to talk about and they go down so uh it, it's tough man I, I wouldn't rule it out but nick i want to ask you about something something i've been thinking about a quarterback who will be available uh how you feel about jacoby Brissett? because i would not i don't love it but I'm curious. I've always been curious. I've had this weird crush on Jacoby Brissett where I don't want to pursue it, but I'm just going to just kind of eyeball it from afar in a weird way. Yeah. Uh, tell me your thoughts on that. Am I crazy or, or is it worth a look? 
you're not crazy, and that does make sense, especially in the Shermer offense. The thing with me is I'm just so out on quarterbacks that lack traits, and Jacoby Brissett runs like he's got anvils in his pants, and you know <laughs> him and Philip Rivers have similar arm strength. You know, it's so yeah. he's a younger quarterback, but he's not really a a toolsy guy. And if I'm coming in to compete with Drew Locke, uh, Brissett definitely raises the floor. You go to him, the offense is going to be able to trudge along. Uh, but I, am I looking for somebody just to like maybe if Drew Locke struggles lead you to a six win season? No, I, I'd rather go with the boomer bust prospect with a Jameis Winston, where if let's say Drew Locke goes down or he struggles, it's either going to work out spectacularly or flame out entirely. I don't, I don't want to sit here puddling you know around what? in mediocrity. You mean to tell me you're sick of the lukewarm retreads that just are coming through this? Like Andy Dalton? I don't want Andy Dalton here. Yeah. Anyone? I like Andy, Andy Dalton more than Jacoby Brissett because he no. at least has like some arm. He has a little bit of athleticism. Jacoby Brissett just does not move. I just he's totally dependent on how good his protection is. Dude, I would take Jacoby Brissett over Andy Dalton all day, every day, mm-hmm. just because I cannot get behind the red rifle. I've never liked him. Uh, I wish him well, man. But dude, I just. But to your point, both guys maybe we don't either. We don't need either one of them, right? We need to go trade <sighs> for the quarterback. We need a Matt Stafford in town, or you know, damn it, we need Deshaun Watson in town. But maybe not. As Willie G comes in here supporting us, huge superstar tonight. Appreciate you so much, Willie G. Look, guys, I'm just not prepared to give up on Drew Locke yet. And Willie G, I like that. That's an honest, yeah, that's a fair response. And guess what? Willie G is doing his homework. He's looking at Jameis Winston. He's trying to figure out what that would look like with Drew Locke. He's keeping Drew Locke around. Drew Locke is going to be here, guys. Uh, The Texans don't want Drew Locke. They don't want you. Nobody wants. I don't think the Lions want Drew Locke. Like no a lot of the rumors of the Lions rumors and everybody's like, Oh, you send Drew Locke over there and he can be the starter. Sounds like the Lions, whatever capital they get in the Matt Stafford trade, they are going to use to be aggressive and move up for a quarterback in this class because you'd have another first round pick guys. Stafford's getting another first round pick. I just deal with it. Um, and the eighth or the seventh overall pick, then you're in range. And I think from what I'm picking up, I don't know if any of the top four quarterbacks will be there at seven. So they have to be aggressive and go up and get their guy. And if you have a first pick or multiple first round picks, you can afford to do that. So if that's the plan for the Lions, why would they want Drew Locke if they're going to go up and get a first round quarterback in this class anyway? Drew Locke's already a project still at age 25, right? So like, I just don't know how much you're going to get back other than him being a kind of a throwaway in the deal. And he's there's more value than, than just him being a throwaway for the Broncos. So at that point, you just keep him. Yeah, I think that's smart, man. And and man, Matt Stafford. Well, we gotta get back to Matt Stafford, right? Because he's kind of the yeah. the toast of the town, and uh, at least in terms of the news right now. And I'm messing yeah. with the wannabe screen, and he's gonna kill me here in another second. Uh, Menungus coming in here with a 4.99 super. Look, guys, you gotta trade Stafford. Give up that ninth pick if you have to, but only if you go get Levante David. Oh, Levante David. We're talking a little bit of draft. We're talking a little bit of trade, free agency, some draft. Man, what do you think? Levante David, what can you say, Nick, about Levante David? Uh, Levante David is probably one of the best players to come out of the University of Nebraska in the past 10 years. Uh, He's probably been one of the most underrated linebackers for a long time. I mean, the Buccaneers have the best linebacking duo in football right now with Levante David being the coverage guy to Devin White's, you know, kind of wrecking ball sideline to sideline guy. Hmm. Uh, The big question is if you bring in Stafford, what's the cap going to look like? You know, are you, are you bringing in Levante David? And that means you're jettisoning not only Von Miller, but Justin Simmons and Shelby Harris as well. You know, it's, it's going to be a weird off season. And I don't even know what the free agency period is going to look like. We don't know what the cap's going to be yet. There's been talk about was it 175. Now there's talk of like 190. We just don't know yet. And there's a bunch of teams that are, They've been paying on a credit card for a while, really, really, really depending on the cap escalating. And then the state of the world happened and that's not happening. So now these teams are like, holy bleep, like we don't have cash. We are in trouble. We can't pay these guys. So there's going to be, it's going to be a weird free agency market. I'm not sure if guys are going to sign contracts that are going to be extremely backloaded, further putting it on the credit card mm-hmm. and uh, then the whole banking on the salary cap going up. Or are there going to be guys who are like taking a one-year deal, kind of betting on themselves and hoping that they can get a big deal after the cap expands? It's just going to be a weird offseason. There's going to be more street free agents than ever because these teams are going to be trying to get under. So it'll be weird. I, I, Levante David, maybe. But what does the cap look like? 
And also you have to weigh that versus if you sign Levante David versus somebody who was released because of the cap considerations, you're, you can still get con- compensatory picks in 2022. If you sign that guy who was released versus Levante David, who just becomes a free agent. So there's just so many factors to weigh in and it again, such an overused word, but like, I can't think of anything else than unprecedented. And that's where we're at in football. So it's uh, it'll be weird. I mean, and it's another thing I was tweeting out this, this morning. I was like, you know what, with how many teams are going to be in financial hell, there's no other way to put it. Financial hell. Uh, does it make sense to move on from Von Miller just because you can spread out that dollar so much more than ever? I just, I hate it as a fan, but like, you know, it's, it's a conversation you have to have. So uh, we got Stu McPeak coming in here. Uh, Stu, we miss you out here in Seattle. It's a beautiful day today. I'm sure uh, a bluebird day. I think they call it when it's snowy, cold, dreary, and then all of a sudden you get a beautiful day. So bluebird day. So Stu, we appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. What's up, Stu? Yeah, Stu, another one of our Super Chat superstars. And speaking of that, I'm taking some heat. Boana, make, Boana you got to help me out. Mr. Boggins is coming after me. <laughs> Boggs is a good friend, man. I didn't miss your Super, and neither did Boana. We were just waiting for that sweet spot because, Bog, you're one of our good friends as well. Go Broncos. Thank you so much for joining the show. Now, Boana, I'm not touching it. And you got Charlie roll, rolling over Bog. We're going to get some MHH crime on crime. You want to come on, John? You want to come on, John? John, come on. <laughs> Come I'm on, John. Face on here in a Come on, John. I'm <laughs> feeling you. froggy. Right. I'm feeling good. I'm hopped up on the Mountain Dew chip. I'm ready to get to the Senior Bowl. But before I do, Mr. Boggins with that 499 Super, who's better to back up Matthew Stafford than a poor man's Matt Stafford? <laughs> Two quarterbacks yeah. in the same contract year in a couple years. Then take your pick. Uh, what do you think of Boggs' theory here, man? I mean, interesting. I think, you, like you said, you got to explore all options. Um, not bad. I like it. I like where Boggs heads at. Yeah. I guess the question comes down to is how desperate are you to recoup draft capital after trading for Stafford and lock being a usable trade piece. Then even if you're only getting a late third or early fourth, maybe a mid third, I think that's probably about what, what I picked up about his value would be around the league. Uh, that's the question to have. And also then you have the locker room questions, you know, for the past two years, they've been pointing at, you know, locks, the guy, follow him. Are there any leadership questions there? Is there any, you know, personality fallouts because you bring in Stafford after Locke uh, has the job sniped from him? So it's something to consider in a perfect world. I agree with you 100% uh, because Drew Locke is extremely cheap and Stafford is getting older. And if Stafford gets hurt, Locke is a, there's definitely questions about how good of a starter Locke is and how good he can be. But as a backup, I mean, you won't find much that are more talented and to have sure. that option to go to, I mean, again, backup quarterback, anybody, if anybody should know how important the backup quarterback can be, can be it's Broncos country. You're not winning Super Bowls without, you know, Bubby Brister coming in. You're not winning Super Bowls without Brock Osweiler stretch there. So to have a guy there, I mean, it's, it's definitely has some value. It's Gary you don't plan on a guy getting injured. Gary Kubiak. Yeah. You just don't plan on his retirement. Injured. But yeah, yeah, just just announced his retirement. I would argue one of the most important people in all of Broncos history. Not only did he go from backing up John Elway, but he went to coaching him as the quarterback's coach and then being an offensive coordinator. And I mean, and then working with him side by side, identifying talent and winning a Super Bowl. I mean, just incredible. So you're exactly right. Number two quarterbacks is extremely important. Um, And listen. Stafford's not going to last forever. All right. I think no. maybe two years is in my opinion would be good to get, get Stafford, try to get a good two how, years how out of Rogers. How old is Aaron Rodgers? That's a good question. Is I he think he's 37 30? or 38? Yeah. I was going to say around 37 as well. That's interesting. Stafford's Cause you got the, 32. Ba- you got the ba- 33 Stafford's 33. He's going to be 33 in November. Oh, okay. Well, I can give Chad a, I can give Chad some hell over a typo then. Cause... He will be 33 in the 2021 season. Oh, well, he's going to be 33, Nick. So now yes. you're just, now you're just making fun of me. But uh, no, man, listen, I, I'm not trying to dump on Matthew Stafford. And a couple little things that I wanted to bring up before we get going is from Chad Jensen's article on milehighhuddle.com. Now he's saying that the former number one overall pick out of 2009, Matthew Stafford is, he already reached 45,000 yards passing now he reached that mark faster than any other quarterback in league history he's done that through battling injuries now when we look at last year he started all 16 games for a terrible Lions team uh completion percentage of 62.6 percent 4,084 yards 26 touchdowns to 10 picks and uh career high came in uh year three 
where he eclipsed the 5,000 yard passing mark and tossed up 41 touchdowns. If you're Matthew Stafford, Nick, you, there's only one Megatron, right? You want to yeah. play with Cortland Sutton. You want to play with Jerry Judy. You want to play with Noah Fant. I mean, TJ Hawkinson's probably like, dude, Noah Fant's great. I don't want you going anywhere, but you go somewhere, you're going to enjoy Noah. Uh, the Broncos have those receiving options, man. Would Matt Stafford want to come to the Denver Broncos? I think he would be open to it for sure. I mean, you have the infrastructure there to obviously have a very good offense. And also you have Melvin Gordon's coming back. You have an offensive line led by Mike Munchak that is exceedingly young and going to be better next season. It would be shocking if it wasn't better considering all those guys are going to be a year older, another year working together. And even though I'm not counting on him at all, and I think there should be a conversation for the Broncos going tackle in the first round, uh, Juwan James should be back as well. So, yep. you know, that's, that's a pretty good offense. The defense is a concern. I see Willie G really harping on that. Uh, we can have a conversation about that another time as well. Uh, the defense being prepared. I mean, you're talking, he was talking earlier about uh, Willie was talking about the, the Broncos defense struggling against the chargers. Well, Motley was substituting Bosby, who was horrible in that game. That was Bosby's last game in Denver because Holy turd bucket like terrible and then uh bradley chubb didn't play that game also probably your best defensive player your most valuable defensive player and sure. uh you know and then shelby harris also got injured in that game so you know it's and i think they even even though they lost it was still a pretty close game and one of justin herbert's worst games in the second half of the season so you know it's i i'm not expecting a top 10 defense but are any of the defenses left right now even top five honestly how's tampa <sighs> their secondary struggles they play pretty well because they can play from the lead, uh, but, you know, up and down, especially right. in the second. And speaking of which, we were talking last night, Vita Vea coming back for the Bucks. That's really interesting yeah. to me. Well, um, hey, I got to interview him at the combine. Too. So Did much you? energy. Oh, my God. And I stood next to him. I was just, oh, my good. It's like, standing house? like a deep freeze. You know, it's just, oh, <laughs> my God. What a freak. <laughs> yeah, dude. I loved Vita Vea coming out. And speaking of love, Willie G giving us nothing but love tonight with a $5 super. Getting Matthew Stafford is saying we're ready to win now. But I just don't think we are. The last thing we need is another Peyton Manning retirement type deal here. Willie, I see where you're at here. Uh, Can we guarantee yeah. that it's going to be as good as Peyton? Because then I'm, we absolutely need a Peyton Manning retirement deal. <laughs> Oh, for sure. That's when, uh, what, John Elway's like, you know, do you have a plan B? Plan B? We don't have a plan B. We're going plan A. And that will be the case if they go after Matthew Stafford because their plan B, Drew Locke, is right there just kind of sitting on the side doing whatever. And they'll either find their next quarterback through the draft within the next couple years or they're while yeah. they're rolling with Stafford. They don't have to be desperate. That gives George Payton time. He's got six years, Nick. He going to get paid. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those things where George Payton is going to have his fingerprints all over this draft because I said it last night, and I'll double down and say it again tonight. Vic Fangio is not picking anyone in this draft. It's George Payton. John Elway's not picking anyone in this draft. It's George Payton. I fully believe that. Everything I'm, I'm hearing is suggesting that. Uh, so I can't wait to see what George Payton's going to do. But speaking of more excitement, Willie, man, Willie's coming in hot. Only referring to the retirement. So Willie doesn't want Matt Stafford to come in here and then it's just fluttering down the drain. Is he going to retire? Isn't he going to retire? You're playing, holding a team hostage while maybe figuring out what you got going on with Drew. It can murk up the waters a little bit, but make no bones about it. If Matthew Stafford is in town, he is your starting quarterback in Broncos country. You should be excited if that happens. Yeah, it's... I mean, you're just going for a more proven commodity and given how uncertain so many aspects are, especially with how this off season is going to play out with how the draft is going to play out, uh, having that certainty, having that top 12 quarterback come in and be an obvious top 12 quarterback, it raises the floor of the room. It makes you a contender in the AFC, especially making the playoffs. I mean, are you going to overcome the chiefs, the Browns, the bills, uh, you know, you never know. I mean, but teams fluctuate quickly in the NFL, so it could be a possibility. I mean, maybe having that level of quarterback galvanizes the defense and then the Broncos can play more ball control. You know, the defense is not constantly put in a bad situation by the offense turning it over and they start to look better. So it's it's also connected. It's really hard to say if they are ready or not. I will say that the offense 
infrastructure wise is ready for a quarterback to come in and lead them because they're full of talent. I mean, really outside of the right tackle position, you can't look to a spot and say like, oh, there's an obvious guy that you can upgrade here. I just, I mean, okay, maybe the Y tight end, Nick Vanette. Okay. Well, but other than that, I mean, sure. quarterback away from being a great offense. And yeah, if you want to roll with Locke, that's fine. It, I mean, he's got tools. He's got enough arm talent. He's still 25. He's exceedingly young. There's a lot of positives, positives sure. with Locke. And if you want to go that way again and roll the dice, that's fine. But you need to evaluate it in the here and now as well. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, and and we had uh, Charlie weighing in real quick. If we could get that back up real quick before I uh, I get to this next one, Boana, thank you so much. This team is never – Charlie Beagle coming in, another one of our great friends of the show. This team has never drafted and developed a quarterback on their own that got us to a Super Bowl. Even Elway was acquired from the Colts. Great reminder, Charlie, because I asked my wife about this, right? She's She has to put up with me, you know, just my daughter. She has to put up with me. I'm asking them, hey, would you trade for Deshaun Watson? And she goes, absolutely, I would trade for Deshaun Watson. I'm like, no matter the cost? She's like, no matter the cost. And I just asked why. I asked why. And she said, because he's a proven quarterback and the Broncos have never drafted a franchise quarterback that have led them to the promised land. Charlie Beagle is bringing up, uh, are the Broncos cursed when it comes to drafting quarterbacks and just them not working out? Or what's the deal? New regime with George Payton? I just, Charlie Beagle, that's a really good point, man. And I'm glad you brought that up. The Broncos, Nick? They've had much more success when they bring in that uh, that that quarterback that's able to try to get them there, like a Jake Plummer, obviously a Peyton Manning. Jay Cutler should have worked out, but just never came to fruition. What do you think about that, man? Are the Broncos cursed, or uh, what's the deal with not being able to draft a franchise Q? Uh, one, it's exceedingly hard to draft a franchise quarterback, and two, the sample size of the years when you haven't had Peyton Manning or John Elway has been rather limited. So, you know, it's definitely an interesting tidbit. I probably don't put too much weight in it. It's kind of like people saying the chiefs haven't had a quarterback that they drafted win a game since what was like the seventies. And then Patrick Mahomes came along and boom, okay, well that's out the window now. So it is that until it's not. So sure. I, I know it's a cool fact. Do I put any weight in it? No. I I'm superstitious about that stuff, man. I, it doesn't man make science. any sense. Man of science stats. Superstitious. I will say yeah. I haven't changed my underwear since they won in 2015. I'm just kidding. But that's why that's we have the problems. <laughs> that's yeah, that's why we that's why, yeah, we've got your man hide wipes covered for you. Uh be sure to get uh, at Manscaped, everybody, and enter that uh that promo code huddle for your 20% off. But no, I want to get to uh we've got a few more minutes remaining here. And so I want to get to your thoughts on some of the games coming up here. Big day oh, tomorrow. Cool big day tomorrow uh my first question is which game are you more excited for the afc or the nfc title game and i'm not going to hold you to it and come back next saturday and be like see i told you this game would be better they're both going to be great games right i guess i am more excited with the afc championship just because i am all about fun young quarterbacks with tools i think that's the way the game is going you know like Tom, the, I think the Tom Brady's, the Matt Ryan's, the Peyton Manning's of the NFL, the guys who you have to have a great offensive line to function or a, an elite mind. And I just don't think those guys, that's not the direction the league is going anymore. So I'm way more interested in the AFC. Young quarterbacks, exciting quarterbacks. Also, I'm really hoping the weather changes. Right now it looks like it's going to be cold and rainy, which, uh, you know, that's why the Bills brought in Josh Allen. That's bad weather quarterback. Boom, we're here. Uh, but I'm hoping... Yeah, yeah. I'm really hoping it'll turn to snow because that's way more fun. But both games are going to be really good. I just really hope they are close back and forth games because I was really hyped about last weekend as well. And while the Ravens-Bills game, the wind was horrible. I I was having PTSD thinking about Brandon Allen in that game last year where one of the worst quarterbacking performances I've seen in a while because he just didn't have the mustard to push it through that air. Um, And it looked bad. And then, (laughs) honestly, the Browns – Chiefs game was pretty good, but it only got good once Mahomes got hurt. So uh, right. you know, I'm just hoping for competitive games. I'm leaning towards the Chiefs and Bills game being more interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you there. And uh, Bawana looked it up for us. Aaron Rodgers at the young spring chicken age of a ripe 37 years of age. Uh, he's you said it earlier. I agree. He's going to be. He's got to be the MVP. I mean, this guy. Sure. This guy, man, is just incredible. What what 
drafting Jordan Love did, what not having the fans did. And, you know, uh, uh, angry Aaron Rodgers is good for the NFL and is good for football watching because it makes things so much better. And you got to know he's upset about that terrible yeah. performance in Tampa from earlier this year. So I got to agree with you. I'm actually going to be able to catch the AFC game, not the NFC game, because I'll be flying out to Mobile tomorrow. But, uh, dude, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. These are yeah, it's fun. like send me yeah. some pictures of food because oh, like dude. mobile of the food. Oh, oh I've never God. been I'm to the I've never been to the deep south, man. I've been to Florida oh, for the shrine game, Tampa, you know, all that stuff, but I have never been to the south. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I will definitely be texting you, calling you, doing all kinds of stuff, man. And I'll be hopping on with you guys too on Tuesday with building the Broncos, the huddle up podcast. Everybody will be getting some thoughts on the senior bowl. And nice. Nick, man, I know you're deep into studying. And you've got your lists going, your draft boards, just like Eric does, just like Lance does, just like Chad, Zach, all of us at, uh, you know, Bawana does. He's he's looking hard into the film. I see him doing the work and I love it. But before we get out of here, KB coming in with a Winston is lock with 12 extra touchdowns. 30 TDs. That, and somebody said Winston picks. was similar to Locke, but in reality, Winston is more explosive and accurate down the field. Both have that turnovers, but you're creating more with Winston. Now, to be fair, Winston had Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, who were pretty damn incredible and probably one of the big reasons that Tom Brady is in Tampa right now. But, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting conversation. Also, I wanted to get, before we get out of here, there's one, he keeps talking, and I really think we want to highlight him. Jerry Holland. It's a long comment here. So, Jerry, I'm seeing hey, you Jerry. here. It's talking about he's talking about Drew Locke being a bust. I don't know if somebody in the comment section is saying that Drew Locke is a bust or if you're picking that up from us. Uh, Drew Locke was what was the 42nd overall pick? Second round draft? pick. He was behind yeah. Dalton Reisner, guys. He was the Broncos' third pick here. All right. Yes. Not a bust. Not a bust at all. I mean, second round, you're talking about maybe a one in 10 chance of that guy becoming a solid starter. The second round is littered with the Deshaun Kaisers, the Brett Hunleys, the Christian mm-hmm. Hackenbergs, the Brian Brahms of the world. Locke has already vastly outperformed them and has more value. I mean, Locke's going to stick around the league for another decade because he has enough tools and teams are going to like that. Now, whether or not he's a franchise quarterback or a starting quarterback, that's that's to be parsed out so far. We'll, we will see. But a bust? No, I mean, when we're talking quarterbacks, the second the return they've gotten on Locke as a second round quarterback, it was a hit. I would say it's a hit. Now, is he a franchise quarterback? That's the question. Yeah, and it's worth taking a shot because guess what? Yeah. You got oh, your yeah. tight end, you got your left guard, and look, John Great had positive. to be yeah, Great John positive. had to be take John Elway had to be talking out of taking Drew Locke in the first round. That is the fact. We saw Dalton Reisner there. Okay, we got to take Reisner. And, and they did Reisner then, because of the Bengals. The Bengals were going to take Reisner at the pick after, so the Broncos knew that. So they took Reisner before Locke because then the Bengals traded down. They were not going to trade down if Reisner was there. So it's a great process. And I thought the Raiders were going to grab him, honestly. I really did. If he was yeah. sitting there that late, I thought Chucky was just falling all over himself with him. So, man, I don't know. It's going to be interesting, though. We will have so much more knowledge of what is going down after the Senior Bowl next week. And I just I can't wait, Nick. I can't wait for football tomorrow. Championship football, dude. And it's been a hell of a show, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Uh, have fun down there. I'm serious. I know what the football takes. I'm interested in that information, but send me the menu. That grub. That, I'm, get... I, I'm about the food. I am all here that, for it. I am a all fat that, guy. That's why I hike yeah, so much. All that, work off I, the all that weight I lost, I told my wife, I'm gaining it all back in one week in Mobile, and I don't even care, man. It's I got to get oh. some winter weight going, baby. Where are you flying into? Uh, I got to fly in, so tomorrow morning I'll be flying into – Nashville have a weird like quick one hour layover not even a layover just time to use the restroom hop on the plane get to Pensacola and then from Pensacola Cecil and I will be driving right from there to Mobile so uh, a little bit of a long day tomorrow but uh, should be a lot of fun well have a great time stay safe obviously it's going to be a weird time you can't go to the typical bar scene where there's a lot of that information's um, given out but uh, you know it's a weird time for everybody right now just to stay safe soak it up um, and make the most of it. Take pictures. You know, that's, it's fun. I remember like, Oh, oh I was at the combine. I was like, Oh, oh that's dude. Patrick Mahomes, the Texas Tech's quarterback. We'll see how good he is. I'll take a snap right here yeah. while I'm talking to him. Like, Holy crap. That's Patrick Mahomes. Now he's like the dude. So have fun. Uh, speaking of fun, yep. had a great time tonight. Appreciate 
everyone who showed out. Gosh, uh, Charlie Beagle still in here. CC, Willie G, uh, O. Janice, Mark Lewis, Henna still in the house. Madunga still in the house. Vic in the house. Uh, Noel was in here. Got- Steven Douglas does not think that Locke is a franchise quarterback. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. Vic Fangio in the house. Vic, I'm, I'm speaking of the food. Make me those meatballs. I'm in. And then I'll oh, use the burger. The <laughs> <laughs> but guys, we appreciate it. You're the best. Uh, happy Saturday night. night. You got to lean into it. it. That's what Chad said. You got to lean into it with the manscape. <laughs> Not too hard though, because <laughs> you never know. Um, but thanks guys so much. That's going to be it for the Mahai insiders today. You can find Luke on Twitter at Luke Patterson LP. Also find myself at Nick Kendall MHH. Go to Mahai Huddle for all of our written and MHH community content. Obviously, the Stafford article is there. There's going to be plenty of draft content. Uh, what's going to happen with Simmons, the new general manager, uh, the, a lot of topics. I mean, the Broncos, unfortunate, another year not in the playoffs, but it's still going to be an interesting offseason. So really excited about that. Guys, go over to, over to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating and a comment. Uh, tell us what your favorite show is. Tell us who your favorite host is. Tell us who your least favorite host is. You know, tell us if you like the the ad readings, you know, we're, we're about it. Just let us know. We're always here to improve and get better. Uh, nothing is off the table. Uh, like, subscribe, and share if you guys are joining us on YouTube. Click those thumbs up if you're on Facebook. Doing both of those can be really, really helpful to us. I see that we have 29 thumbs up and hearts. Guys, get us to 30. We need that Terrell Davis. 29, one person mm. out there, if you can't hit that thumbs up for us, I, I don't know what we're doing here. Uh, y'all stand on the table. Nah, I don't know. We'll get it's, on. A, it's a folding table, a little break. But guys, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, doing all that can help us continue to bring you our Denver Bronco deep dives. Follow us on Twitter at Mahaya Huddle and at MHI underscore football pod. Luke, I'm going to let you get out of here, spend some call. Oh, we're up to 30. Whoever that was, you are the yes. MVP. We love you. God bless. Yes. Um, God, that's that's great. I made my night. Uh, thank you guys so much. Stay safe. Luke, you stay safe. Have fun. We appreciate you. Also, shout out to uh, John K. M. H. H. Buana Beast. Follow him on Twitter at w- as well. Um, I'm not going to flash him up on the screen because he always takes himself off, and I, he doesn't want to do that. But the, there he goes. There he goes off the screen. He always does at, it when I at John K. M. H. H. Get at him. We cannot do any of this without John. John is our producer. He does so yeah. much work that you guys don't even know about. He's humble. He doesn't brag. Thank you, John, so much. And uh, Nick, let's. Just, I'm just going to end it with a go Broncos. Stay safe, Luke.